A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, you can put it together and figure out and prove positively that Mary Lee and the Blue Creek had to form within a few weeks or months of each other. That's exactly what you'd get in a flood. We cover more on that on video number six about the flood, what caused the coal seams during the flood. Here's some from Cookville, Tennessee. Petrified trees standing up, running through multiple layers. Joggins, Nova Scotia is famous for its petrified trees in the vertical position. Most of these pictures are on our website, drdino.com. We've got a piece of petrified wood in our museum running through 12 different layers of slate. And they're going to tell you in school each layer of slate represents a different season. So that's 12 years. I'm sorry, that's not true. That represents movement of the water and separation of the particles by density or something like that. We get into that in video six. So don't let them tell you the layers are different ages. Sometimes trees are found petrified upside down, running through multiple rock layers. Now we really have a problem. I've thought about this one until my brain hurts. As far as I can figure this out, the evolutionist only has two ways to solve this. He can say the trees stood upright for millions of years while the layers for slowly formed around them. Mm, I find that one hard to believe. Or he can say the trees grew through hundreds of feet of solid rock looking for sunlight. <laughs> There's a third way to solve this. Maybe those trees were buried in a big flood. Mm -hmm. How fast was that calf going? Might be two ways to look at this, you know, yeah. When Mount St. Helens blew its top, it blew thousands of trees down into Spirit Lake. Over 20,000 trees are, have already sunk to the bottom and are stuck in the mud at the bottom of Spirit Lake. Many thousands of them are standing up in the vertical position. And those trees are going to petrify. They're already beginning to petrify. It does not take long for things to petrify. Here's a piece of petrified firewood. I've got a piece of petrified pallet in our museum from a pallet shop that cut pieces of wood. Some kid sent me a box of petrified acorns. He said, Brother Hovind, I tried an experiment. I put these acorns in a bucket of water and forgot about them. A year later, I went out to, I thought maybe they might sprout, but now they're all petrified. Would you like some for your museum? I mean, they're solid rock. Here's a petrified dog inside a tree in Georgia. They cut the tree down for firewood and said, wait, 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 don't cut that one up. There's a dog inside. Turn to stone. Here's a petrified cowboy boot with the cowboy's leg still in it. The boot was made in the 1950s. Here's a petrified fish giving birth. Petrified hat from New Zealand. Here's a petrified pickle in our museum. <laughs> I'm not kidding. A guy sent it to me. He said, Brother Hovind, we found this old house in Montana. The roof was gone. The house had been empty for at least 30 years. We went down the basement. There's a bunch of jars of pickles, a pantry. But the lid to one of the jars rusted off, and inside the pickle turned to stone. Would you like it for your museum? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> a petrified pickle. The jar was made between 1930 and 1960. That's the year they made those jars. I don't know when the pickle got put in there, but sometime in there. Don't let them tell you it takes millions of years. There's petrified sacks of flour found in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, from a fl fl flour mill that flooded in the 1910s, I believe. So kids, when they tell you the layers are different ages, you're being lied to. That's not true. Don't believe that. 80 to 85 percent a verse surface does not even have three geologic periods appearing in correct consecutive order. This guy says it becomes an overall exercise of gargantuan special pleading and imagination for the evolutionary uniformitarian paradigm to maintain there ever were geologic periods. The geologic column is a hoax. One of the biggest lies ever passed off on humanity, but the vast majority of the world believes it. Even though it doesn't exist, when they started teaching that in the 1830s, people began to change their worldview away from what the Bible teaches to this new view from Charlie Lyle, the lawyer from Scotland, that each layer was a different age. This teaching really had a strong influence on a young preacher from England. There was a fellow that just graduated from Bible college to be a preacher. His name was Charles Darwin. The only degree Darwin ever got was a theology degree. And today they call him a great scientist. All he got was a theology degree. Which is not bad, I mean, but he, you know, he's not a scientist. Charles Darwin set sail on board the Beagle. He's going to sail around the world and collect bugs for somebody back in England. And he decided to bring some books with him to read. He's going to be gone for five years. As he sailed around, he brought with his Bible. And he brought with that book by Charles Lyell, Principles of Geology. That book changed his life forever. Darwin later wrote to a friend and said, Disbelief crept over me slowly. I felt no distress. He slowly lost his faith in the Bible. 
By the way, later when he died, his wife started the rumor that he repented on his deathbed. That rumor still circulates today, but apparently his wife made up the whole thing. Nobody knows for sure, but that's what the best research says. Darwin sailed around the world. He stopped off at these islands right there called the Galapagos Islands. There on those islands, Charlie noticed there were 14 different varieties of finches, a little bird about this big. But their beak shape was different. Now, Charlie didn't like birds too well. I mean, he raised pigeons, but he also liked worms. He was a strange guy. So he shot all kinds of birds, thinking, you know, he would help the worms out, give them a better chance of survival. Because birds ate worms, and he thought that might be kind of hard on the worms, so he shot all the birds he could find. Well, he collected all these birds, and he noticed there were 14 varieties of finches. He studied them carefully and said, you know what, folks? I think all these birds have a common ancestor. I bet you're right, Charlie. It was a bird. <laughs> and then Charlie said, you know, maybe this proves that birds are related to bananas. <laughs> you say, oh, he didn't say that. Oh, he sure did. I got his book right here. Charlie Darwin said in his book on page 170, he said, it's a truly wonderful fact that all animals and all plants throughout all time and space should be related to each other. Isn't he saying the birds and the bananas are related? He sure is. That's a lie. There's no proof any animal is related to a different kind of animal, other than maybe a common designer. Charlie noticed what is sometimes called microevolution. I don't like that word. I think it confuses kids. Okay, I'm going to use it, but you understand what I mean. Microevolution is actually just a variation, okay? Dogs produce a variety of dogs. Roses produce a variety of roses. Nobody argues about that. It's a fact, folks. It happens. The question is, does it go any farther than that? Does it go into what we call macroevolution, where it changed to a different kind? Walt Brown, in his book in the beginning, an excellent book, by the way, he says microevolution is horizontal. Macro would be vertical, changing to a different kind. Another way to illustrate it. Dogs probably had a common ancestor. Even the Great Dane and the Chihuahua probably had a common ancestor. I wouldn't question the fact that the dog, the wolf, and the coyote had a common ancestor. But every five-year-old kid knows they're the same kind of animal. We had one try it earlier in the seminar. We had, had a dog, a wolf, a coyote, and a banana. We asked the five-year-old, which one is not like the others? He got it right away. The banana. See, the Bible says they bring forth after their kind. National Geographic here has an article from wolf to wolf, how the dog evolved from a wolf. I don't argue with that. It probably did. But it's still the same kind of animal. Here's Mickey Mouse evolving. <laughs> yeah. The Bible says they bring forth after their kind, not after their species. But this guy says, the results of this and other similar surveys are startling because evolution has been a settled issue for science in science for nearly 150 years. They found out that 46% of adults in the United States do not think humans had evolved. Well, you better define what you mean by evolved. Right, the majority of folks do not think they came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago. Now, if you want to believe that, that's fine. I don't care what you believe, but don't call it science. Evolution has six different meanings. First, you'd have to have cosmic evolution, the origin of time, space, matter. Secondly, you'd have to have chemical evolution. The hydrogen from the Big Bang would have to evolve to all 92 elements, plus the synthetic ones. Then you'd have to have what we call stellar evolution. The stars would have to evolve. And nobody's ever seen a star form. We see them blow up all the time. And yet there's enough stars out there that everybody on planet Earth can own two trillion of them to yourself. Those are the ones we know about. We don't know about the ones we don't know about. Then we'd have to have what we call organic evolution, the origin of life. Nobody has a clue how life can get started from non-living material. We'll cover more on that in the next session, about the origin of life. Next, to have what's called macroevolution, changing from one kind of animal into another. Nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog. And lastly, we have variations within the kind that some people call microevolution. Okay, this one happens, whatever you call it, it happens. The first five are purely religious. But the definition of the word evolution is really confused for the students on purpose, I believe. I think it takes a giant leap of faith and logic just to go from micro to macro. It sure takes a big leap to go to the other four stages. Macro evolution is a fantasy based on imagination. They believe it must have happened, but there is no evidence for it at all. Teachers, though, will give the students one definition of the word to get them to believe the theory, and then they slowly weed in the rest of it when they're not looking. 
They're going to say, evolution is descent with modification. That's deceitful. That's not really what they mean by evolution. This textbook says, evolution is change over time. First definition. Watch how they change.